we were trying to work out work out some kinks and and try to do some things and see if the offense could do them or not. And the game was out of hand. Um, it was like practice in the fourth quarter. Welcome to My Got a Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I review Georgia's 34 to seven victory over the Florida Gators in the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. As always, remember to check out store.mygotapodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media at My Got a Podcast. Finally, if you like what you hear, please subscribe, rate, five stars obviously, and review the show. If you leave us a review, you just might hear it on an upcoming episode. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. I kind of feel like we should have recorded Saturday night. <laughs> So that we would have or, the, had or, more energy, <laughs> or Sunday, yeah, or, or, or Sunday morning instead of uh, being super tired after the late Halloween night. <laughs> <laughs> late Halloween, uh, the Braves' uh, complete buzzkill. <laughs> yeah, that was a buzzkill. So let's 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 go back. Let's try to remember before before Game Five. <laughs> let's go back in time. And just think of how amazing we felt flying high uh, really all day Saturday. Uh, Well, especially from about two minutes left in the second quarter of the football game on. (laughs) (laughs) From that point on. Well, I definitely think that, uh, I don't know, I feel like that for a large swath of the fan base, and I think that to their credit, CBS, like, did much a much better job than um, I, I guess the SEC network. You remember earlier this season when they had like zoomed in on the on the huddle pregame, right right before our offense was about to take the first snap, and mm-hmm. it was like Stetson Stetson Bennett was in the in the huddle, and like it was like oh the most anticlimactic reveal because mm. the announcers were trying to make it out to be like, it was going to be this big reveal. Yeah. We're not really yeah. sure who's going to come out. Is it going to be JT? Is it going to be Stetson? And then it's like, well, we could see that it's Stetson. <laughs> <laughs> He's just standing there in the middle. <laughs> exactly. But this time I felt like we didn't know. Nobody really knew. And then all of a sudden, like the huddle was there and maybe, maybe there was some pregame banter, maybe some Twitter screenshots from writers of him taking snaps with, with Van Pran, but I wasn't privy to any of that prior to. So for me, like watching it, I was like, uh, is it going to be? And then there was like a reveal. I was like, Oh, there's 13. Yes, that's it. <laughs> You're right. I, I didn't re- even really think about it until you said it just now like that, because also I would say the camera angle they had and like the camera shot was actually really good because yes, you were kind of like ground level and you saw the offense running out and it took a while until you could see who the quarterback was as they were like running out in the field. So you're right. Yeah, it was a nice reveal. I guess that was pretty uh, good, pretty good TV, pretty good production um, from CBS. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't really, I had uh, obviously I had my brother-in-law over, um, I had my father-in-law over and I was like, you know, host prep mode. So like mm. I turned, I turned things on was trying to watch it while I was making burgers and stuff. And so, I didn't get a chance to really delve into the pregame updates and news. The text thread was popping. <laughs> um, so <laughs> yeah, I was getting updates. I think that we were, I mean, I was surprised because <laughs> there were, there were inside sources that were talking about how it was going to be JT and how JT had the, the lion's share of first team snaps, but JT didn't play. Yeah, there was a lot. I think when we recorded the preview, we were both, I mean, obviously it's on tape, but you know, we were pretty confident it was going to be Stetson and that feeling definitely seemed to move a bit throughout the week. And it sounded at least that, that they would rotate or that JT would get into the game at a minimum. Um, So yeah, by the time the game actually came around, I was surprised. I still wasn't surprised to see Stetson start. I think we were kind of, you know, neither of that would surprise you. Um, I was surprised, and I guess probably still am surprised that JT didn't play at all, um, especially when things weren't going that well. Again, you know, kind of inside information into the uh, thought process of Jim and John irrational 
of football fans during the game. <laughs> like <laughs> when the offense was struggling early, it was kind of like, are, are we going to, is JT going to come in or what? Right. Um, but it eventually, you know, eventually settled down. And I mean, really just that flurry in the end of the second quarter just ended the game. Um, that was <laughs> the fact that the Georgia, the official Georgia football Twitter account tweeted out that escalated quickly. Uh, yeah. I still can't believe that happened. That was amazing. Um, but it was the perfect summation of, of what happened, obviously. I mean, like everyone, everyone tweeted that <laughs> and everyone texted that, that we, we need that, uh, over under, uh, boy, that escalated quickly, uh, you know, gifts, means and, and, and tweets, uh, Whatever the line was set up, we would have gone over for sure. <laughs> for sure, coach. Coach missed an opportunity on that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> dude, uh, there was so much good that to, that happened in this game. I mean, if nothing else, it was just a. I, I think I mentioned it on the on the broad on our. I almost said the broadcast on our on our last podcast. Um, I think I had mentioned that there was a good opportunity that it, it would not surprise me to see us us shut them out and yeah. i think that by and large we should have and i think that, that was probably the most disappointing thing um right. felt a lot like right. the what was it, the auburn game where it was like it was oh, like man. the kentucky game when they used the timeout kentucky, that's what it, was. it was it was pretty much like that i mean they scored a little you know with a little more time left but it was and someone and someone actually commented on that that the the veracity or whatever that teams that are getting absolutely slaughtered by Georgia, how how hard they are trying to score in the fourth quarter was really right. intrig was really intriguing. So yeah. like basically basically teams are doing everything they possibly can to not get donutted by this defense. Right. Just to be able to say, we scored a touchdown on Georgia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, literally, your only hope this season is to score a touchdown on this team. Right, right. It, it, uh, I mean, on a day where the offense was not like, I mean, it, it was not clicking on all cylinders, right? I think Stetson was a bit off. Um, I mean, that, it, it, I don't know, man. It, I will say, though, like, it, it, the offense started off great. Um, you know, that first drive was incredible until the um, intentional grounding, which I still think was a bad call, but whatever. Um, I, I, w I don't see that as intentional grounding, but I mean, I, I, I see why it was called, like whatever. It's, I've seen worse, worse calls. But, you know, that bogged everything down and then missed the field goal, which uh, mm -hmm. we've got a lot of uh, mentions. Uh, Swirly wins on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> 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 but like, you know, like once that happened, though, like, I don't know, everything kind of disappeared for a while and the offense just like was not functioning. But to consider that on a day like that, right, where the offense didn't bring their game, um, we're a little bit off. We had three turnovers in the game, yet we still blew them out 34 to seven. And I mean, it just shows, I think, where both programs are right now that Georgia can have a game like that and absolutely wipe out the Gators in the cocktail party. It's, it's kind of crazy to think about. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know what happened, man. Like I know that we were, we were messaging during the, during the game. Like it just, it felt like that we had just kind of given up on, on the run after, for there a while there. Cause it felt like that there were multiple series that, and I haven't even had a chance to really d dive into that. I'm sure that um, I'm sure that Graham and Josh are probably going to do a little bit of that, and I'll nudge them that way <laughs> so I can maybe get some maybe get some confirmation for how I feel. But right, right. it just felt like I I get it. We had an even balance. Like we had run basically the same number of pass plays and run plays. But I felt like on a series by series standpoint, there was one a couple series I felt like we never we didn't run the ball at all. Or we ran it minimally, and most of the most of the drives were like all passes, and it just felt like it wasn't necessary because for all of the all the things that he's done so well, Stetson exhibited a lot of what frustrated everybody about him last year. I felt like, yeah. and 
he made a very poor decision on the interception, which <laughs> was was offset by probably one of the dumbest things I've ever seen a defender do. Try to try to take that interception out of the end zone. <laughs> right, right, yeah, not ideal. <laughs> and that I mean turned the game around, really, right? But yeah, I mean, I guess it shouldn't shock me from a defense that was coached by the same guy that couldn't get the the batted pass down. Oh God! Why do? Why, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, I would say both both picks were pretty bad. I think the first one was a, a horrible decision. The second pick, um, more just a bad throw. I think I, I can't even remember who he was throwing to, but I think they were kind of open. But he like threw it inside when he should have thrown it outside. Something kind of like oh that. yeah, it was you it, know it, it, um, it was an ill timed throw. Like yeah, it was an ill timed throw, which is it, what frustrates people about Stetson. Yeah. Yeah, and that second one, though, was very much like, why are we throwing the ball? Which, here's what's interesting about that to me, is it's like, the game was totally in control. You know, all we had to do at that point was hand the ball to Zamir White, and you're going to win the game by a lot of points. And we did do that at the end, and he, you know, rewarded uh, the coaches by doing that with his long touchdown run to, you know, even more so seal the game. Um, Mm -hmm. And, like, that's all we needed to do, right? But mm-hmm. we're still out there throwing the ball around. I mean, I, I call me crazy, but I feel like Munkin was like, hey, let's work on some stuff. <laughs> and like when you're doing that <laughs> against Florida, like, holy crap. I don't know, man. Like, that's what it felt like to me. Because it was totally like, you know, why are we? It, it, it was, it, we were, the game had gotten to the point where in the past, you know, we, we just, um, it was like the Kirby's March of Death. Right. Like you just have these long drives that are mainly, you know, probably 80 percent running plays and you're just running out the clock at any of the game. We never did that in this game. We kept throwing, uh, which is not usual. And that, that was the only thing I could come up with is that we were trying to work out work out some kinks and and try to do some things and see if the offense could do them or not. And the game was out of hand. Um, it was like practice in the fourth mm-hmm. quarter, you know, mm-hmm. I mean. Which is again crazy to think about in this game, and I absolutely am here for and love it. FTMF. <laughs> yeah, seriously, seriously, it was definitely FTMF all day long. Um, and you could I, tell, and you could tell, like they, the defense was mad. They got angry. Mm, the yeah, they they definitely turned it on because I feel like that you know the offense wasn't exactly picking them up, um, mm. doing them any favors. And all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, you are you guys are – I feel like Florida got like a first down and, and the defense just got so pissed and then you, they just shut it down. There was, there was a series there where there was like a long third down that they got mm-hmm. and I feel like everybody got pissed. I It, it is pretty awesome. And they um, something that happened in the game that Gary Danielson said, and, and he talked about it later in the game too, where – so it was at, basically it was after the first pick, right? So Florida has the ball first and 10 at their own, what, one, one and a half. And Mm -hmm. Gary Danielson said, Florida needs one first down to get out of the half, to get to half down, down three to nothing. And (laughs) two minutes later, uh, it was 24 to nothing. So (laughs) like, we've got to talk about the flurry. Um, So first off, Nolan Smith, holy cow, uh, both plays. So the, the, you know, the stripping of Richardson, um, like a, is a heck of a play. I mean, he just ripped that ball out of Richardson's arms and Richardson is a big dude. I, you know, got a, I guess we haven't even really talked about that. Like, you know, we had heard that he was going to be the starter. He was, um, mm-hmm. I do kind of question that now they definitely looked, I feel like they looked better once Jones came in, but also the game was kind of put away by that point anyways. But, um, you know, amazing strip by Smith and then one play drive touchdown with James Cook, uh, kick off the ball back to them next drive interception by Nolan Smith, uh, which that play was just incredible to me because both Trayvon Walker and Nolan Smith dropped back in coverage. Um, it was like a zone blitz. I know we brought Nicobe Dean on a blitz. I think somebody else, you got those two guys, you know, defensive linemen, basically dropping back into coverage. And it was Trayvon Walker that 
tipped the pass and then an interception by, by Smith. Uh, and then again, a one play touchdown drive uh, with the touchdown pass to the unofficial official wide receiver of the podcast, QS Jackson. Uh, yes. Which like, welcome back, Kiera. Like he looked like himself on that play. Um, he did. He looked good in this game too. Like he, he looked good in the game uh, for sure. I, I I think he is uh, getting his health back. Um, so that was incredible. And then the Nickobe's Nickobe Dean pick six, uh, which you know we had <laughs> we had heard rumblings about uh, was was Nickobe injured in practice, and Kirby Smart said Nickobe is fine, and Nickobe was definitely fine. <laughs> <laughs> and again, and there, like he was out lined up almost like a corner. Like I think they had split a uh, running back out wide, like as a wide receiver. I mean, Nicobe Dean was like on the boundary of the field defending like a defensive back and read it like a book pick six. I mean, at that point, I mean, the game was over. <laughs> if, if, if Jordan Data- Davis made himself millions of dollars running down the UAB quarterback from behind, mm. yeah. um, Nicobe Dean made himself some money on this game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. 50 yards. Knee looks fine to me, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, <laughs> I mean, there, no one had a shot at him. Uh, no. It, Not it was even incredible. Richardson could run him down. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was impressive. Um, with, so with that, we were talking about, we were talking about Kiaris. Um, you know, we had, like, actually – Interestingly enough, all those people that Kirby said were hopeful actually played. <laughs> That's like a, a, that may be a first. Um, like they didn't play, I would say, like significant snaps and certainly didn't have significant roles. Uh, mm-hmm. But Jermaine, Jermaine Burton, he played. Arian Smith, he played. Um, and then, like, on, or say Kenny McIntosh, he played. Um, but then, you know, Amir Speed also played. And then Chris Smith, kind of like we thought. Uh, you know, was back. He he started, so we got a lot of guys back. Um, so you know, hopefully that will just continue to help, especially on the offensive side. Like I said, you know, with, with Burton and then with Arian Smith, like they played, but I don't think they got a ton of snaps. But I did see them in there, and you know, obviously they're on the participation chart. Um, that's only going to help whoever is the quarterback, right? Um, right. But I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't you know. It's one of those things where, like, we, we just we blew Florida out, uh, but there's still things to work on. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think that that's I think that's going to be the focus because um, clearly this team is how this team is going to ride out the rest of the season. Very clearly rests on how the defense performs, mm-hmm. which is both like not something for us to worry about yet. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to go on a bold statement here, but like, I don't know that we have anything to worry about until we get to the college football playoff. Mm-hmm. Um, because Cincinnati, as we saw in the you know in last year's game, which I can recognize that you can't really compare the two, but like the team, a team like Cincinnati or a team like Ohio State, those two teams are averaging very good yards per play, um, net mm-hmm. yards per play. Um, Georgia is not quite as good as Ohio state and we're a good bit better than, than Cincinnati on the yards per play standpoint, uh, which okay. is just kind of like the measure of how elite you are at stopping and, and running, you know, running your team basically. Um, right. So I'm not so, yeah, like unless we face some of those teams, even like the Alabamas, you know, they're below average or right at it. Um I just don't know that there's a team on the left that we could potentially play that's going to worry me. Um, if I'd have yeah. told you before the game started, Jim, that UGA would have three turnovers, what would you say the scoreline would be? Oh, man, yeah. I mean, I, I would think that that's what we would have done to let Florida stay in the game. You know? Like, I would have – if you told me we had three turnovers, I definitely wouldn't have imagined that we would have covered – the 14 point spread. Like I would have thought we would have been within 14 points. Yeah. yeah you know? For sure. Like a 10 point game even. Yeah. Um, if so, if I told you that your team had three turnovers and you won 34 to seven, what team <laughs> does that most likely resemble in the last decade? Like who would I have thought that we would be, we would be playing? No, no, no. Like, who, who? what other team do we know of in the last decade oh. that can perform at that level? 
Yeah, Alabama. Yeah. This yeah. team is the quintessential, like, old school Kirby Smart, Nick Saban, Alabama. This is 2011 yeah. Alabama reincarnate, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't disagree, man. That, uh, like, we are doing that blueprint that we were told was dead and couldn't be dead. Exactly. Anymore. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we're doing it in the, in, in the day and age where. The, the 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 Alabamas of the world are even moved on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone else, like, we got to outscore everybody. I mean, obviously, you have to score people, outscore anyone to win a game, <laughs> by definition. But, but like it, you know, we're not giving up the points. I mean, it 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 is nuts. Um, and I'll, I'll say too, like, you know, I when I when we were picking the score for the game, I mean, I, I said. Although I actually I got our score right, so I, I said 30, uh, 34 to seventeen, um, and you were like, you really think you know Florida is going to get like almost half the points that have been scored on us all year, <laughs> like in one game or something like that? Uh, and so like yeah. yeah, I mean you were right. Like I guess I hadn't really thought that through that much, but also like I don't know. I kind of felt like you know Florida's offense has been very good, um, and I, I guess you know Dan Mullen would point to the fact that they outgained us. <laughs> yardage wise uh fun fact florida has outgained all eight of their opponents this season uh yardage wise yet their record is four and four uh it's been an odd year for those guys yeah i mean i guess so i mean when your defense can't get people off the field and your offense can't actually score i mean that's that's the equation there right like yeah the defense has been has been terrible and the offense just, I guess, I don't know. I, I, I haven't looked into it, but, like, I wonder, like, what their red zone scoring percentages are. But, like, they, they gain all these, this offense and they don't score. Like, there were definitely drives where it just felt like, golly, what the hell's going on? And then all of a sudden they get down to the, you know, crunch time. It's like, oh, yeah, they can't do anything. And then they punt. Mm-hmm. And then we have to go down and, and do our thing. And, you know, we had our fair share of punts too, particularly early. Um, and you throw in some turnovers and it's like, well, that's a recipe for how Florida gets their yards. Um, you know, we were averaging, I think we averaged what, like eight, nine yards an attempt um, from a, from a passing game standpoint, which is below our season average. Uh, we predicted that we would see a heavy dose of, you know, James Cook and Zamir White, which we definitely did. I mean, Zeus had over 100 yards rushing, which I don't know when, how long it's been since that happened, where we had 100 yards I think it was rusher. the first time this season, right? Right, exactly. That he's so, at 100, yeah. Yeah, and, and to be perfectly honest, like, I wanted him to have 150. I wanted him to have 200. Like, I wish that we had run Zeus way more than we did. It was kind of weird. He could have. He absolutely could have. We could have yeah. just, you know, rode him uh, and, and done that. I'm not exactly sure. Again, the only re- the only explanation I can come up with is we were trying to work on some things in the passing game. Because, <laughs> I mean, I mean he, he was running all over him. So. We averaged 5.8 yards, uh, you know, 5.8 yards a rush. I mean, Zeus was yeah. 7.5. I mean. Yeah. That, those are big boy. Those are big boy numbers. I mean, heck, the way that Stetson was running the ball, like, <laughs> right? He, yeah. he took off. He took off a few times. I was like, there he goes, Stet the Jet. <laughs> uh, and like multiple times, he was who was he out running and running around? Brenton Cox. Brenton Cox. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was pretty funny. Um, I, I just re- remember there was a pretty cool. Um, I think it aired on the SEC Nation. I think that's what the like the game day type show that's on SEC Network is that SEC Nation, whatever that's called. Mm-hmm. Um, they had like a segment on on Zamir White uh, with Marty Smith. It was pretty cool. Oh. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Um, no, I didn't. Okay, I'll, I'll send it to you and definitely recommend everyone to go watch it. It was very cool. Um, like the guy has been through a lot and went through a whole lot just like as a baby and a young uh, young kid. Um, you know, was born very small, um, had cleft palate, um, so had to have multiple surgeries on that. Um, mm. just, uh, I don't know, perseverance that he, that he has had, um, is pretty, it was pretty cool. Uh, you know, 
Kim was like slicing onions apparently while I was watching it. You know, it got a little dusty. I don't know what's going on, uh, but it, it was a good mm-hmm. segment. So definitely recommend watching. It. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool to see it's that. It's cool. Maybe maybe tweet it from the podcast account. So all yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have to go find it. I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, one other thing, I, I was just kind of perusing the uh, the box score or, or the stats. We had talked about how many times would they get into the red zone. Um, and so looking at it, it looks like they only made it into – Florida got into the red zone twice. So they did hit the over of the average, you know, Georgia's defensive average of 1.5 times, uh, but only barely. Right. <laughs> um, some weird decisions by Mullen too, like that when they went when they went for it on like fourth and pretty long in the first half. I don't know if you remember that. Um, it was kind of weird. Like had like the Georgia's like 34. Uh, with uh, and that was before the flurry. Um, and it was yeah. kind of weird. Uh, I, don't like, I don't know. That I don't was, know exactly what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a questionable call. I don't. That doesn't. Does that go down as a turnover in the in the stat column? No, it's just the, well a turnover on downs, but it doesn't go as a turnover. Exactly. Okay, so technically they had four turnovers. Um. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. When that were, when they were lining up, did they have a penalty? Wasn't there a penalty right before? I don't know. And, I, and, and I feel and like maybe, they had third and fairly long, and they got a little bit, and then, yeah, maybe there was. I don't know. It was like they were lined up to go for it, and then they still went for it, and it was weird. I don't know. What, what do you, I mean, what do you make of, like, where, where does Florida go now? Like, what happens? So, like, you know, so they lost – you know, it wasn't like the 74 to nothing or like 1942 or anything, but lost pretty handily to Georgia. The, the post game press conferences, the, um, the distinct difference between, between the way Dan Mullen answered the questions about recruiting and the way Kirby smart answered the questions about recruiting just shows the difference of, of their mentalities. Um, like, where do they go? Like, do you think, does he make it? Does he survive? Are they, were they about to, about to make a change? What do you, what do you think? I don't know the way that things have been going today. Um, they were after, after his recruiting comments, um, Florida yanked the press availability for both Grantham and, um, and Mullen. And they also yanked the press availability for the players too. So basically Florida is going radio silent with the media until further notice, basically. Um, I think that if you were a Florida Gator preseason, sitting at four and four is probably a tough pill to swallow. So I imagine their boosters are raging right now. Um, knowing the Florida people that I know, um, I know they're not, they're not thrilled. Uh, I know they're not thrilled. Um, I checked in with Mike Schneider. If you recall from the last, from the last podcast, I checked in with Mm -hmm. him and said, have you, how's it going, buddy? Haven't heard from you in a while. How's things going? He goes, oh, it's you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mentioned, I gave him a shout out. He said he was going to listen. I don't know if he's listening now, but um, (laughs) yeah, he he said, he said, yeah, the game went about as I expected. You guys got our number. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I think that they, I don't know, man, they could. So here's the thing. Um, Games left on their schedule. They have South Carolina. It's at South Carolina. Um, that's a night game in South Carolina this weekend, which is going to be, uh, as we'll probably we'll probably discuss on Missouri this weekend. Supposed to be really cold. Um, then they play Samford. Then they have Mizzou on the road, and then the, I believe that they're at home. That's a home. Game. That's a home and home. That's not a, a neutral site game for FSU, is it? Uh, correct. Remember. Yeah, it's a home and home. Yeah. Yeah. So they're home. They're home against Florida State. So, you know, I think if you were a Florida fan, you're probably expecting four wins there. So an eight and four season. So a solid, a solid Ray Goff season, right? <laughs> um, right. Welcome to what it was like for Georgia fans in the, in the late eighties and early nineties. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you know, like w- we all, kind of said uh I don't know, like there were multiple people in the preseason that said you know Florida may be staring down an eight, you know another four loss season 
uh, just like last year. Um, and here we are. Uh, they're there. I, th- I think you're right. I mean, they should win their last four. Um, they really should. I, the I agree. Question, the unless unless question. the player, unless Mullen loses the locker room, right, and the players check out, then I can see right. them losing another one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I said, that game at South Carolina, cold weekend. I don't know, man. Night game. Yeah. yeah. Um, South Carolina is probably going to be looking for a reason to be excited. Um, cause I think, yeah, uh, they're, they're in the same boat. They're literally in the same boat. They're four and four, but they're one and four in the conference and Gators are two and four in the conference, which Holy cow. Can we please just like put a exclamation point on that? Florida Gators are two and four in the sec this year, the year after their greatest ever offensive output. <laughs> yeah. It's nuts, man. They, uh, it, it's the kind of thing where, like, when we were saying these things preseason, like, part of it is kind of like tongue in cheek, like, ha ha ha, they're gonna have four losses again. But like, I mean, <laughs> holy cow! Like, it's, uh, I don't know, man. It's like kind of worse than I. It's worse than I thought. They're they're in a they're in they're in a worse spot than I even thought they would be. Mm, yeah, for sure. Um, I think that the the loss to LSU was. If you're yeah. if you're a Gator fan, the loss to LSU, I mean, uh, Kentucky. They shouldn't have lost you, that game, man. They shouldn't have argue, lost LSU. You could argue Kentucky as well. Like they basically tried to lose that game too, but like at least mm. Kentucky was ranked in the top ten, yeah, um, or t- whatever they were top. You know, they were ranked. LSU well, they, was unranked. Like after they, I mean, after they won that game, they were or whatever, right? So right, right, right. So I don't know, man. LSU. Losing to LSU this year has got to be the low point for them, for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know where you go. I don't know where you go as a, as a Gator fan. I think we talked about it before. I, I foresee Grantham's going to get the can here soon, particularly if they lose another one before the bowl game. Yeah. But either way, I think Grantham's gone at the end of the season. Um, it's just a matter of when, in my opinion. But – it wouldn't shock me to see them fire him. The question is the real the real issue is, is like who do you who do you hire after yeah. that? Right. I mean, right. maybe they're setting up for Grantham to to get fired, and then if you're Florida's, if you're going to stick with if you're going to stick with um, Mullen, um <laughs> then you might as well go after someone that's a good defensive pedigree. So, could we mm-hmm. see Coach O on the sidelines at Florida? Hmm. As the like as the defensive coordinator? As, as the defensive coordinator, yep. Okay. Yeah, it could be. It could happen. I mean, he's the best yeah. available in my opinion right now. Yeah, I mean they'd have to do some kind of Hail Mary, something like that. Or Mullen would have to try to make a Hail Mary defensive coordinator higher, I think, to stay. Um It'll be interesting to watch. Right. Interesting to watch. Um uh, but you, you mentioned their loss to Kentucky, which just uh, I mean, realize you know we're 30 minutes into recording, and we haven't even mentioned that Georgia won the SEC East. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't, that funny? isn't it great? But, how 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 what a non-event that is. Yeah, it's 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 like we are. You know, I don't I don't even know if we've had an official post from the the athletic association about it from from the Georgia Twitters, but um, yeah. that just underscores the expectations for this year is. We're not done, and we're not planning to be done for quite some time. Yep, yep, says a lot. I haven't seen anything either. I think you're right. I, I, I know there is like you know SEC East champion gear that you can buy. I did see like an ad for that, but <laughs> somewhere, uh, <laughs> if you're into that kind of thing, uh, you That's can buy funny. it. But yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, we we dominated. How did how did we how did we net out on our on our predictions? So let's see the the score hit the under. Uh, we both took the over, so we were both wrong there. Um, well, over under the point over under point total was fifty one. There were forty one points scored in the game. Um, and then for the pre- game uh, predictions, you had Georgia forty five to ten, and then I had Georgia thirty four to seventeen. The actual score thirty four to seven. Yeah, I, I, clearly I just misspoke. Like I meant thirty four seven. The team maybe that's a mistake. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
So uh, I didn't feel like we did pretty good. Uh, you know, we were close on the, uh, the, the trips to the red zone that got discussed. Um, and then the, so the one, uh, I'll point to one of coach trail bills over unders, you know, if Stetson starts 15 and a half uh, pass attempts, we, we, we hit that cause we said over, I think he, I think he had 19, uh, pass attempts. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, which I think was was less than we probably thought, right? Because I think we were thinking kind of 20, 20 ish is usually 20, what Stetson yeah. throws, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was uh, uh, 19. I had, it, I had it up earlier. I've lost it. Uh, Stetson was, yeah, 10 of 19 uh, for 161 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. So, yeah, that's two um, interceptions. Not the best day passing for the mailman. But again, if you can have an off day like that against Florida. Right. And still right. win thirty four to seven. Uh, it's pretty impressive. You know, speaking of the quarterbacks in the passing, like you know, we talked about you know, you know, AK forty seven. You know, even though he looked like more like a BB gun, um, I think that <laughs> that was mentioned. That was I like mentioned. That you call him, I like that you call him AK forty seven. It's AR fifteen. AR fifteen. AR fifteen. That's right. But I he, totally totally butchered it. <laughs> but, but he looks more like a he looks more like a red rider. A that red was, rider. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what we got him. <laughs> Uh, what an idiot. Um, the the interesting thing about it is, I'm you know, kind of goes back to you know, sh- am I going to have to factor garbage time into this? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. Emory Jones, Emory Jones had a pretty decent outing. <laughs> he did. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I kind of questioned, like, you know, and and I, I mean, you know, in Mullen's defense, like I even said, like, feels like they need to make a change. Like, it seems like a good time to make a change, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, Emory Jones certainly looked better. But, again, like, Emory Jones was in at garbage time pretty much, right? By the time he came mm-hmm. in, the game was over. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, any, mm-hmm. which, by the way, it's not like they switched. I mean, because Richardson got hurt. Like, he got he got hit in the shoulder. Um, that's why he came out. So Oh, I don't – I guess I missed that. Did I miss that? Yeah. Yeah, he, he went into the tent, uh, like into the injury tent. Uh, and Jeez. then, and then didn't come back in. So he got, he got, I can't remember who hit him, but, uh, somebody got him kind of in the shoulder. So I was, I was probably drinking bourbon at that point. Um, or <laughs> more, the bourbon. Bourbon. More, more bourbon. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. He did not have, he did not have a, a great day and he was their leading carrier. <laughs> he carried the ball 12 times. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh man, that's ridiculous. He had more carries than James Cook did. Poor guy, mm. just getting beat up through the air, beat up on our on our line, and then Dan Mullen's asking him to run option, which I feel like is just a recipe for disaster. Um. Yeah, yeah. man. No, it was a uh, it was definitely a good game to watch. <laughs> yeah, man. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. I, you know. Kind of the early early lull, right? Uh, first quarter, kind of sleepy, and then you know the defense just erupted, and we had that two minute uh, flurry, and then it was a a nice and relaxing rest of the game. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll give I'll give Graham a shout out because I remember you know the the Dog Sports Live um, cast podcast. Um, he had mentioned that this was probably going to be a frustrating first half for, for dog fans. And boy, was he right. Yeah. But we won. And then after that, we had a nice, you know, the Braves treated us to a nice little comeback win. Yes. Saturday, uh, much better, uh, Braves viewing, uh, than, than Sunday. Sunday was not, Sunday was not as fun. For sure, but uh, it was nice to be able to transition from the Bulldogs' historic dismantling to a fun, a fun baseball game, which frankly wasn't fun for eight innings, but <laughs> right, right, it ended up being amazing. Uh, Carter and I got a Carter and I got to celebrate, you know, in dramatic fashion. I woke him up; he fell asleep on the couch outside. We were we were outside watching it on the patio, and um, he fell asleep on the couch, all bundled up. And I was like losing my mind after after the back to back home runs. And he was like, "Yeah, oh my god, what happened?" <laughs> yeah, 
I actually ended up watching that game over at uh, so at my, at my buddy's house. Actually, the guy I was talking about that's a Yankees fan. Um, mm. He 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 was like, "Hey, you're gonna have the Braves game on tonight if anyone wants to come over." So I did, and yeah, um, he's got like a TV set up in his garage, kind of like your buddy. And uh, I mm-hmm. was definitely like running in circles around around his garage, screaming <laughs> yeah. after Solaire's home run. Uh, <laughs> so Sunday, so Sunday for trick or treating, my neighbors. So I watched, I watched the the Georgia game and the baseball game over the air. Thank God they were on broadcast because mm-hmm. it was so much yeah. easier. So I watched them over the air. So I was ahead of everybody, um, yeah. Yeah. people that were streaming, people that were on cable. So my neighbors were telling me as I was trick or treating, they're like, "Yeah, I heard you screaming." So I knew that something good happened. <laughs> so I had to That's look up and make, sure, and make sure I was looking for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a big difference, man. Especially like antenna to stream is crazy. Um, but it's already, there's already a gap, you know, antenna to like, yeah, like you said, like cable or direct TV, but compared to like YouTube TV, <laughs> it's a pretty big gap. <laughs> it um, is. It really is. But, uh, but yeah, cigar, we had some victory cigars. I hit the honey hole and got some Weller the, that that on Saturday or was it Sunday? Friday? I can't remember. Um, and then uh, my my brother in law brought over some E H Taylor, which I have not had in quite some time, but mm. it was also fantastic. So we had a you know victory cigars. He brought over some really nice some really nice victory cigars, which that reminds me, I took a picture. I, I can't remember what they were called, but they were really good cigars. I didn't do any victory cigars. I did have some victory bourbon. Uh, and we, we did, uh, we did the bean dip. We did a uh, Pondo Samus, uh, bean dip, uh, TM, TM and, uh, did that during the game. So we had that and then, uh, yeah, ha- had some, some victory bourbon actually during the Braves game. Um, clearly that's what fueled the Braves comeback on. Yeah, exactly. On <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Well, I'm glad, glad you in, enjoyed the cocktail party. I know I did. Uh, the dogs have won the East. We are in the driver's seat, and uh, my how the gators have fallen. My how the gators have fallen. Uh, all I can say is, Florida, thank you so much, <laughs> and go dogs. Uh, go dogs.